remind you that this uh, month, which is known as Saga Dawa, Saga Month, is a very important month. That uh, three important events took place during the Saga Month, Beshak Month. Buddha's birth, Buddha's enlightenment, Buddha's passing away into Parinirvana. Because of this, whatever we do, virtues, imvirtuous or negative, multiplies hundreds and thousands. So, we all need to be free. Why? No one want to suffer. No matter whether, or whether we are human beings or non-human beings, everyone want to be free. For this reason, it's, we should be intelligent to be able to choose right days and right months so that we can do something really simple but it has the power to achieve a goal that's in incredible limitless so on the full moon on the second month that, that it, is, it is a day also falls the fourth month between the fourth month during the lunar calendar it is the day Buddha has chosen to give birth on this planet as young prince the king, the king, the sons of uh, Shuddhana, son of Maya Devi, that he was born. Prince Siddhartha was born where? Northern India, the Garden of Lumbini, in the forest of Lumbini. He was born. Moment he was born, who who proclaimed he is going to be the one who achieved the goal of freedom and and would show the path to liberation to mother sentient beings. How wonderful that is! Moment he was born, he walked. Seven steps in four directions and pointing out in the sky by his right hand and also down on the earth that he is going to benefit beings in the celestial world and down in the in the, in the on the earth and beneath. That's what he did. And normally, Maya Devi, the mother of, of Siddhartha, supposed to go to her family to give birth. That was the tradition of, of Shakyas. Then on his way, Siddhartha wanted to do something different, not born in the family, but born in the open space. He was born in Lumbini on, on his way to Nepal. Then, after his birth, instead of continuing his journey, he returned back to the palace. On the way, when 
his father, Shuddhana, Shuddhana, received the message. He was so delighted because he wanted to have a son. And he had a son. Then, of course, he requested her to return home rather than continuing his journey. He came to the Kapilpastu where he had his palace. Then there he met the great sage Ajita, was one of the greatest sage at his time. Heard the great news that Siddhartha was born and he came to pay respect. Then, he sh- then King Suddhana welcomed Ajita and uh, Ajita mentioned he would like to pay homage to the to the young prince and then the king placed young Siddhartha in the hand of uh, Ajita he was so delighted and he was so, so happy then what happened Ajita burst into tears. King thought that it's terrible that someone's crying that must be sign of bad omen or some terrible thing is going to happen. Ajita declared, no, there's no bad omens. Checking the face, checking the palm, checking the and the sole of the feet. He said nothing but auspicious auspicious sign. He, Ajita, the great sage, mentioned, I'm crying because this young prince is going to be enlightened. One of the greatest beings in the world, in the earth, in the universe. But when he gets enlightened, after the enlightenment he would teach. He would give a teaching that's based on noble truths. But I will be not there. I will be already gone. That's why that he was crying, not because there's some bad omen. Of course, King Sudhana wanted to him wanted him wanted his son be powerful ruler of the universe. He said, I wanted to have a child that would conquer the universe. And Ajita mentioned, yes, he would not only conquer the universe, but he will conquer perfect freedom. And he will declare, he will give teachings that transcend the circle existence, that of beyond nirvana. He would give teachings that brings everyone toward freedom, whoever had the fortune to engage in the path. That's why uh, Achita, the great sage, declared that it's such thing, such amazing thing that this great prince going to be enlightened and would teach to share the discovery, the path that leads being to freedom. So he he continued getting all the trainings, whatever he needed to tr- get, studies, all kind of knowledge, gathering the best, best teachers from everywhere in the world. He learned all the sciences, science of, of healing, medicines, science of art, science, all everything he learned, he became the best, best. And then one day, when Siddhartha, Siddhartha's father wanted him to, to get enlightened, so he wanted to distract him for that. Rather, he wanted to become ruler, ruler of the world. So therefore, he gathered many, many things to get distracted. But one day he asked his father, May I have permission to go out of the of the the wall or the palace? 
he had no other choice but to give the permission. So he went out. There he had, a, he was forbidden to see like a sickness, old age, death, and freedom. But Siddhartha, day after day, he had this incredible fortune to see for the well-being, well-being, and for the well-being of sentient beings. First, he came across four men carrying a dead body, and Siddhartha asked his Chandak, the charioteer, "What is this?" Charioter uh, mentioned to Siddhartha, this is a death. What is death? Death is when you finished all possibility to continue in this world and your consciousness would separate from, from the body. Then your body will be disposed in any means of, of the elements and then you will be gone. So that I asked, curious, very curious question, is this will, something that can happen to my father, to you, to me, to yes, so the, the Chandaka, the charioteer, Chandaka. Chandaka and Chandaka, the charioteer, the horse, the Kandaka, the Siddhartha, they are very good friends. So, Chandaka mentioned, yes, this is something that inevitable. Every human being, every sentient being, if there is a birth, there is a death. This is this something very common to everything. And he was not really happy. Then, he returned to the palace. Again, he was very curious. And very, very curious. And what else? Then he went the next trip outside the palace, outside the gate of the palace. Then again, he came across someone really very, very sick. Very, very sick. Then Siddhartha asked Chandak again, is this something can happen to everyone? So that, that Chandaka mentioned. They both was right, riding on the chariot, chariot, chariot that was driven by Kandaka. Yes, it's something that common that everyone can get sick. Then he asked, "Is this can something can happen to?" My father, to my family, to every one of us, yes. Everyone can get sick. Then Siddhartha was really not very happy about that. This world is full of trouble. There's a death, there's sickness. As his father really want Siddhartha get distracted and especially only think about the conquering the world, enjoy the pleasure. But Siddhartha was very wise, intelligent, want to find it out by he, his own means. So he went again outside. Now he has seen sickness, he has seen the old age, he has seen the death. And also he came across another event that is someone so, so peaceful. Then Siddhartha thought, there's a way that I have to find this way to be free from sickness, from old age, 
gotten dead. And then he returned, although he became so good in everything. And he, then his father really wanted him to, to get married. Then Siddhartha thought, okay, I have to fulfill the wishes of my father. Then he got married with Gopala, the prince, princess Gopala. He has chosen amongst many, many princes. And then he had one son. Son that most beautiful. And what name he has given? Rahula, Rahul, Eclipse. This is Eclipse that to some circle existence, this Eclipse is to bring to, to freedom for everyone so that sufferings, the beings, has opportunity to be eclipsed or free. So, the apple, when there's an eclipse, it won't remain eclipse forever. There's an end to it. And then the moon will come out after the eclipse. So, the apple, even there's a trouble in the world, even, even there's a trouble within, but there's a way out. Therefore, he named his son, can you believe, Eclipse. It's going to bring freedom for all beings. And then, after some time, Siddhartha decided to, to leave, take leave, but the king said, you have to rule the kingdom. So Siddhartha thought that's, that's okay, he took responsibility to rule the kingdom for a certain time and he established medical issues so that everyone be protected from sickness. He established many, many like uh, means to help the people, establish shelters and everything he could. But it's not something the ultimate. Therefore, he wanted to search for, for freedom, but he left. He left. And when they reach, although there are many, many kind of trouble for Siddhartha to leave, there's a guard everywhere, he couldn't leave, there are many. But somehow, on the full, full moon day, all the guard fell asleep, and the Siddhartha asked Chandaka to take him out. So, Chandaka prepared outside the gate, the Gandaka, the horse, and then they left the kingdom. And then when they reached in the place called Vishuddha, the Siddhartha took off all his jewelry, his crown, everything, he packed them and told the Chandaka, return to the palace, bring all this to his father and his wife. Then Siddhartha changed his beautiful silk with a hunter. He dressed as something really very simple. Then he went for searching the best, best well-known teachers he met, one after another, Alara, and Udaka, the, the most famous teachers, spiritual teachers in India. And first he got like lessons on how to to practice asceticism and all kind of like standing, keeping your hand like in the air for a long time and all that. But actually, without doing all that, he could find uh, all the answers. His teacher was so amazed. He said, now, Siddhartha, please stay in my, my institute and teach all the students. Siddhartha said, 
I did not get the answer I was looking for. Therefore, I would take leave. And then some best, best, best students followed Siddhartha. Then, thereafter, he went to the next teacher. And also he received teachings what they consider the highest level of, of meditation, Shamad and all that. But he could not, he, he, it would not satisfy him. And uh, what Siddhartha discovered is all the, what the teacher dis, teacher's time to pursue to achieve, Siddhartha discovered already. So the teacher, Dhaka, said, please stay in our, like a ashram to teach all the students. Siddhartha said, no. It's not just, I'm not satisfied what we, I found here. Then he left. And in, from the two places, the best, best of students followed him, poor Siddhartha, and then he went. On the way for the search, he came across the prince of Rajkriha. Rajkriha. Bimbisara. He was riding on his, his horse. He was so impressed by Siddhartha's serene peace. So that the Bimbisara got down his horse and plead to to Siddhartha for to remain in his kingdom. Kingdom Magadha was one of the biggest kingdom in northern India that those days. He said, please stay with me, help me. I would offer half of my kingdom. Siddhartha mentioned, I just left my whole kingdom. What shall I do for half a kingdom? I left the left whole kingdom that I used to own, but I left behind to find even greater peace and freedom for others. I'm not looking for ordinary pleasures, transitory pleasure. I'm seeking to the ultimate. The, the Bimbisara was so impressed by Siddhartha's determination, peace. And then he pleaded, please, then when you achieve your goal, please come and teach us. Then Siddhartha left and he decided to sit under the Buddha tree near the Naranja River and he sat there, you know, for six years, hardly taking anything to eat or drink, and he completely like became a skeleton. And he really determined to find the answer. Then he became so weak. So Dada thought, torturing your body through asceticism is not that you will not be able to get the answer, you have to find a middle path. And at that time when that thought crosses in Siddhartha that intend to stop his fasting, and then nearby there was one very, very rich family who had so many buffaloes, was one of the richest farmer around that place. She was so devoted to Siddhartha. He was completely crazy about Siddhartha. He is handsome and all that. And then she made delicious porridge. Cream out of hundreds and hundreds and thousands of buffalo milk and putting all the, all the like, you know, honey and all that made delicious, delicious, the most delicious the porridge and brought to Siddhartha. Siddhartha regained his strength and he took that to be able to transcend this duality. Extreme is extreme, like extreme is extreme, that you have to find the middle way. Then Siddhartha gained his strength and he thought, I still did not find the answer, I have to continue. He walked about six kilometers, I think, from Naranja River to, to Budgaya, where 
he decided to sit under the, under the Bodhi tree and he came across one man who was carrying load of uh, of bunches of uh, kusha grass. Siddhartha asked, would you be able to give me some some of your your kusha grass? He said uh, he was so delighted. He asked, what are you going to use for? I am going to use to sit on and to get enlightened. And then he asked, what is your name? My name is Mangala, means auspicious. The, so Mangala was so happy to be able to offer kusha grass. The kusha grass is often used to clean, to clean the place. And also, so that I thought that is really auspicious. He's going to clean the whole universe and the sufferings of all beings. Then he threw the bunches of uh, of uh, kusha grass he received and under the Bodhi tree made a beautiful circle. Then he thought, Siddhartha thought, okay, this is auspicious. Not only is it kusha grass, but made a circle so I will be able to conquer the circle existence. Then he sat on it around the dusk time on the full moon. Then what happened? Then there were so many temptations. Actually, it's, a, it's our inner bear battle, but it might appear the ex external battle, battle with Maras. Then there was those temptations with the, the Mara saying, that, oh, now the, your cousin Devatata is, is, uh, took over your palace, and your wife is like uh, abused by Siddhartha, this uh, Devadatta and all that. Siddhartha, see the hallucination of all that. And then, actually, it's in a, it's in a battle, but it appeared external. The Mara sent his best, best of the daughters to tempt Siddhartha, to seduce. But, uh, Siddhartha could see the loose nature of everything. They could not tempt him. But Siddhartha see loose nature of the beauty, loose nature, nothing, something that you can really depend on. And then when the Mara threw all kind of weapons of aggression, anger, then it turned into the flower because Siddhartha had such incredible love and compassion. Therefore, his goal is to achieve the freedom for the sake of others. Then what happens? It turns into flowers, you know. That's what Siddhartha already trying to teach us. When you have you come across like desire, to look at the nature of the desire. Where you can find peace instead of completely you're tormented, burned by the desire or attraction. Likewise, when you are attacked by anger, aggression, you have compassion. Compassion turn into, into every perceptions of aggression into because you meditate on loving kindness and turn into flowers. The finally, in the first watch in the morning, after subduing, subduing, conquering all the aggressions of Mara actually is something inner the conquered and he got enlightened he became free under the Buddha tree on the Besha day on the full moon day he got enlightened so that's the, the first on the fourth month on the full moon he got enlightened Then he is supposed to teach. That was his goal. But he was requested by many to teach. But he took time. For 49 days after he had got enlightened, then of course he taught. He taught. He taught walking toward Varanasi near the park near the park of Varanasi called 
Kuulut. Sanat. There he taught to his first students who followed him and who left, who, who left him and they were there and he taught. Of course he wanted to teach to the Ajita but he's already gone, he's already passed away. And then he taught on the Four Noble Truth. Four Noble Truth. That, you know, after, after 15 days and after no, 49 days from today, he Buddha taught in his Arnaad. And then on the Four Noble Truth. Truth of suffering. We must know, we all should know, nature of the suffering. When you, when you are trapped by, attacked by the suffering, you should try to look. Look for what? Source of suffering, which are conflicting emotions and negative actions, that is what we need to conquer. We need to be free from from that, through which you can undertake the path, and then to the path, and then that will lead you to, to the freedom, and that, as Buddha, also one full moon after that he, all these different things, and finally he got, got in line, and he, he got, and he, he went to, which place? Kushnaga, where he go, he interned for Nirvana. So, this day, today, the full moon, it is a three important if, important events, which are the birth, the enlightenment, and for Nirvana. Three important event took place and also others that there are several important places in India which if ever any one of you are visiting should visit which are the places Lumbini where Siddhartha was born and Budgaya where he got enlightened and also San at the place where he taught and also there is the uh, Shrasvadin where he spent 40, 40, 44 years to teach and also Rajgriha he taught the teachings on Mahayana and also Vaishali all these sec places are considered sacred a place and also like Kushnaga where he got enlightened so Friends, today is the day of all the events took place, and so during the whole day, whole month, whole month, still we have 15 more days, whole month. Month in the, in the full moon, he got, he, he, he was born, and he got enlightened, and he passed away in the Parinirvana, and so it's very important. So please try to do everything what you can, everything what you can, to have good heart, to do everything what you can by your body, by your speech and by your mind, to benefit others, benefiting others and benefiting yourself. Especially please try to try to protect the lives of others that is in danger. And also try to really watch what your body is doing what your speech is doing, what your mind is doing, please watch, observe. Try to try not to engage in in negative emotions. Do not engage in negative actions for yourself and for others. Try to do what you can. Virtuous actions by your body, by your speech and by your mind. On the basis of love, on the basis of compassion, on the basis of joy, basis basis of in like impartiality and also you know the six parameters considered very important be generous be disciplined be diligent 
be tolerant, be, con be focused, concentrated, and the one base is the wisdom. This is very important, you know, very important. Whatever you can, try to be generous, and then also be di kind of really disciplined and also diligent and tolerant and also concentrated and special on the basis of uh, the wisdom. So, I would chant names of Buddha and uh, I hope you will chant with me. Buddham Sharanam Gachami, Dhammam Sharanam Gachami, Sangam Sharanam Gachami, Buddham Sharanam Gachami, Dhammam Sharanam Gachami, Sangam Sharanam Gachami. I take homage to the enlightened one. I take homage to the te noble teaching. I take homage to the noble community who follows these teachings. Buddha also mentions Om ye dharma he tu prabhava he tekin tata kato haya vatit tekin chayo naroda evam vati maha shamana ye soha What does this mean? It It means Everything manifests from, from a cause. The Takata, the great sage of renounced one, mentioned, avoid all kinds of harms. Engage in virtue, especially train your mind. This is the word of the Buddha. And Buddha mentions, I will show you the way. Actually, the freedom depends on you. For this reason, avoid all kind of harm. And Buddha mentions, I cannot wipe away your sin or negative actions. You're the responsible. It cannot be washed. It cannot be removed with hand. And just simply avoiding negative actions, negative emotions. That's how you can achieve freedom. You are responsible for your own freedom. So therefore, we are so fortunate that we can do something for ourselves and for others. Especially doing something for others is doing for ourselves. So, as usual, I'm going to call upon Buddha with, uh, with the most precious, like a Dharani. Tat yata om muni muni maha munaye soha. Tat yata om muni muni maha munaye soha. Tat yata om muni muni. Mahamuna Yeso. Along with, I would like to call upon Padmasambo, who is uh, no other than Buddha himself. You can check in the sutra where he mentioned before, before entering into Nirvana, when all his students cried, and he declared he is going to return within like a, you know, within eight years as Padmasambo, although people might claim it too, but not, he would really try to guide us. So therefore, Gurumbhacha's name, Gurumbhacha's like mantra is Om Aum Bhajrayang Guru Padma Se Deho Om Aho Bhatra Guru Padma Se Deho Om Aho Bhatra Guru Padma Se Deho I will call upon 
Buddha, the Lord Great Compassion. Om Mani Om Mani Om Mani I will call upon Buddha Amitabha. But I'm infinite life, light. Om Amidevare, Om Amidevare, Om Amidevare. I wish to have infinite life with, the, with the perfection, so I will call upon the Buddha of infinite li life. Om Amarani Jivande So Om Amarani Jivande So Om Amarani Jivande So And we need to be protected and guided by Mother Tara Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Ye So Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Ye So Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Ye So There are sickness in the world to reduce, to overcome them. We need to call upon Buddha of medicine. Yadam began, Jim began, Jim Maham began, Jim began, Raja Samutga de Yeso, Diataga began, Jim began, Jim Maham began, Jim began, Jim Raja Samutga de Yes, Diadam Bayakan, Jim began, Maham began, Jim began, Jim Raja Samutga de Yeso. We need wisdom for this. I would call upon the Buddha of Wisdom, the Manzu Shri, Omar Abhajanad, Omar Abhajanad, Omar Abhajanad. Um, also, it's so important to call upon Bajrapani, the mind aspect of all the enlightened ones. Om Bajrabani, Om Bajrabani, Om Bajrabani, Om Bajrabani, Changjo Sanjo Rambo Jem, Aje Banam Jeju, Jeba Nyamba, Meba Ye Kona Kondo Pevaraisho. Please try to save lives. Please try to avoid all kinds of harm to others. Please do whatever you can. Virtuous actions by body, speech and mind for all. Benefit all our loving mother sentient beings. I send you all my love, best wishes for your health, for your happiness, for your peace. Till next.